I got a little ambitious today. <laughs> so we'll have to scale back a little bit. I had a lot of stuff I want to cover today. Um, where is my, um, my visualizations? Let me start a new one and then open up week two tutorial. I think this is really cool. Okay, so we're gonna do all the importing at first and then we're gonna import this World Bank data. Uh, how, are we doing this for uh, like uh, Power BI? I mean, did you guys have any questions on the tutorial? Oh, so uh, actually I'm connecting to remote server. So if we are doing this for Power BI, I need to do that in a remote connection of Westminster. Oh yeah, we're not we're not a Power BI yet. We're not a Power BI yet. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're gonna go back to Python real quick. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, what I'm gonna show you here in Python is you can use triple quotation marks, single quotation marks to comment out your code so we can isolate it. Okay, so this first chart's pretty easy to do, right? World population over time. It's a line plot. <laughs> so what, what happens here is we get the data from this website and the, you can copy this link here and you can paste it right here and you can see the data set yourself. You got year in one column and pop in the other column and this is a CSV file. And you got 1950 world population out to 2100 estimated population, right? So it shows the population uh, increasing at a decreasing rate, right? And the way it works is you have this um, PLT is this right here. We imported matplotlib.pyplot and we abbreviated it as PLT. So it kind of has an SQL thing. We renamed this toolbox PLT, right? We renamed it PLT right here, PLT. This is a toolbox. Now one of the toolboxes, one of the tools in the toolbox is a plot. This is a line plot. X goes on the, year is on the X axis and pop is on the vertical axis. And then this right here just tells you to show it, right? This just tells you to show it. And then this of course is the title, right? So there's not really much to that, right? We import the data as a pandas data frame. So WBank is a da Pandas data frame. And year is WBank, right? This is both columns. And this is one of those columns, right? Year, we're, we're gonna grab year out of WBank, right? So this is, this first column is year and the second column is pop. Okay, so that's how we grab the data. In, uh, I'm, I'm getting an error code on line seven. On line seven right here? Yeah, it's saying module not found error. No module oh, named have, plotly. We probably have to um, just right for right now, just comment it out with a hashtag. Okay. And then hashtag this out. We might not get to that. Yeah, that'll, that'll work. We probably have to install that. Okay, now I'm gonna move this down to the next set of code. Okay, now we're gonna grab this WDI data. So you can view it by pasting it and viewing it. Now you got GDP per capita, you have life expectancy, life expectancy in 1950, nation's population and the, the color coordinated or color uh, according to uh, continent, right? So we have one, two, 
three, four, five variables here. So the first one is GDP per capita. The next one's life expectancy in the year 2007. This one's 1950 life expectancy. This is population in 2007. This is what where the country is located in terms of continent by color. And notice what I do here is I space out it so that the periods are all lining up. And that just allows you to see the errors, right? And th this is how you can build a report. I mean, have you guys ever seen the employment report by the BLS? You think somebody writes this up fresh every day, every month? No, they use a script, right? What are the fields? Well, this word rose is probably from an if statement. If last month's employment number is less than this month's employment number, then rose. If they're the same, then you would input no change. If it's if last month is more than this month, then you would put falls, right? Falls by, right? And this would be the difference in February E and January E, right? So this is produced by a script, right? Probably a Python script, I would suspect, right? And I'm giving you kind of a taste of it right here, right? Zimbabwe is the last row of the world data, world development data, it's GDP per capita is blank. We gotta convert the GDP per capita to a string, right? This minus one refers to the last row of that column, right? Minus one refers to the last row of the column. It's life expectancy, we're gonna convert that to a string, is in the last row of that, this particular column. And it's life expectancy in 1950, last one. Minus one is the last one in the column, right? And then this produces a graph. So another tool in the PLT toolbox is histogram. And histogram needs at least one input, the variable, okay? And the default here, We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten bars there, right? Ten bins. We can define the number of bins if we want with an option. So I can delete that hashtag. Whoops, I went too far. And I can put a comma bins equal 15, and it'll change the look of the chart. See that? Change the look of the chart. Now it looks like we have a uniform distribution for these countries right here, right? So countries with a life expectancy of 40 to 70, looks like it's pretty uniform. And there's probably a little overlap right here, right? This chunk here, right? These are probably developing nations, right? And then these are developed nations, right? And there's a little bit of an overlap, right? So that, that, that's an interesting graph. We can compare that life expectancy to what it was back in 1950 by doing this. So now we're gonna run it for 1950 and we're gonna use 15 bins. So we're gonna compare what it was in 1950 to what it is in 2007. So what does this chart tell you? What does this histogram tell you? Life, people are living longer, aren't they? There were a lot of, the big, the, the um, what, 20% of nations had a life expectancy of about 40 to 43. Look at the biggest category now, from about 72 to 74 right? We're talking about more than 25%. So there's been a massive shift in life expectancy. And then look at the axes here. This is about 30 and this is about 40. This is about 75 and this is about 85. So the, the histogram has shifted, right? It shifted. 
and then it's gotten flatter right here and it's gotten taller here. So that's kind of interesting, right? It shows a massive improvement in life expectancy. And then we're gonna do another kind of chart. We have, uh, now we're doing a scatter plot, right? So we did a histogram. We did a line chart, which is, which is just plot. We did a histogram and now we're gonna do, now we're gonna do a scatter plot. Okay, we're gonna do a scatter plot of population versus life expectancy. So we got population and life expectancy, right? Now, what two nations are these? Which do which which nations got the most population? China. And then India. Yeah, you kind of see it looks like a triangle, doesn't it? We got a huge pile up near zero. So we got a lot of small countries, right? So one, one thing we can do is we can experiment with taking logs of things. Logs uh, get rid of that, what's called heteroscedasticity or account for it. So let's first make the X scale log. So this logs population values. So it's gonna compress. See what it did to it? It kind of compressed it and made it a kind of random jumble of points, didn't it? You see that? Right? This is India and this is China. So it compresses it. This is a chart that makes a statistician go pitter patter, their heart go pitter patter. Right? They love this kind of chart. Right? Where did you, where did you put log? I, I like got rid of the hashtag on the X line. Like right 50? here, 49. Oh, 49. So there was a hashtag there, right? The four? Oh, no, on 47 and 48. Of yours? Yeah. Okay. So that would be on 48 of mine? Yeah, it's just plt.x scale log x scale. On both of them? Now, take, you, off, take out the uh, hashtag. Yeah, now take out the hashtag for the y scale. Does it improve the graph at all? It doesn't really change it that much, does it? You see that? It doesn't really change it much. Because the dispersion vertically is pretty uniform. Mm -hmm. the, dispersion, the, the dispersion vertically isn't. Or, I mean, horizontally. X, Y, the dispersion isn't very uniform. Mm -hmm. But vertically, the dispersion is pretty uniform. Right? Now, it is common to take logs of both. It is common to take logs of both. And the reason why you do that is because if you fit a line to this, the elasticity, that, the, the slope of that line would be an elasticity. It'd be, a, it'd be interpreted as a percent change over percent change. That's why you'd want to do a log log, right? Otherwise, the interpretation is a little complex. Either, generally, if you don't really understand, either want to take log of X and log of Y or just leave them in levels, right? It's easier to interpret the slope. I mean, you can if you do a log level or a level log, but you either want to do log log or level level, right? Level level is not doing anything, not doing a transformation. So we'll, do, we'll leave it like that. Now down here, We have this gap miner tools. You can copy this link right here. This is, this is what basically what we're gonna graph. This is really kind of slick. This is all powered by Python, right? And you can click the play button over here, watch this. It shows you how these countries evolve over time. This is the United States. Does anybody know why it's going back and forth? Life expectancy was just assumed, right? If it dips, there probably was a war. Now the data is probably more accurate. Look at the United States grow, right? The Great Depression really dropped a lot of those values. China, here comes China and India. <laughs> <laughs> 
They're like they're like Jupiter and Saturn, right? <laughs> Pretty cool, right? That's powered by Python, right? We're gonna we're gonna create the 2007 version of that graph right now. So this is the 2007 version of it. It's not going to look very pretty at first because I've taken out all the options. So there it is. There's no, it doesn't look like it, right? It doesn't look like the one in 2007. Or I just go back. We got a long ways to go to get it to look like this, right? We got a long ways to go. We got a long ways to go in a short time to get there. We're going to do what they say can't be done. I mean, what movie that's from? Uh, that is the Smoking the Bandit. Yeah, the Smoking the Bandit. One of my favorite movies of all time. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to play around with the scale. We're going to see if the logging X helps it. <laughs> logging X helps it, doesn't it? It's not so bent. It's more linear. Notice we got a group of countries right here. You can think of them as the developed nations. Then you have a group of nations here that are probably not so developed. But then you got some really wealthy nations here. They're probably really corrupt. A lot of corruption and war, civil war, right? Brutal dictators with really incredible natural resources, probably like Nigeria, right? So you can see the groupings of countries here, can't you? And this grouping is pretty linear. And this grouping is pretty linear here, right? And this, this is linear. So this is probably where we want to leave it. We want to leave it like this. <laughs> we, want, we don't want to maybe play around. We don't want to change the, uh, oh, we don't want to change the Y. I don't have Y log up here. I have only X log. Okay, and then this right here, does our labels. I wonder if it's going to work because I don't know if I have the labels in here. Oh, I don't have the labels. Dang it. I forgot to bring the labels in. We'll just keep them hashtag. We'll just keep them hashtag. I think I have to do the same thing with the title. Oh, no, we can do the title. I got the title up here defined. There's the title, right? Okay. So then we can get, um, I don't know if I can do this. I don't have, I, I forgot to, I forgot to grab these definitions. So we'll, we'll next do the, uh, we'll do this here. See that? What, do, what does pop do? What do you think pop does? When we add this piece of code right here, S equal pop, what do you think that does? What is pop? Population? Population. It changes the size. Yeah, so S stands for size. So we're creating a bubble chart. So India is right here and China's here and that's the United States, right? That's kind of cool. And then we'll uh, change. Um, Mine has colors. Yeah. Then we'll we'll add the color in, right? We'll add in the color. The problem with this chart, though, is you really can't see the pile up, can you? You can't see if there's a pile up here. There might be only one country here, but there might be 50 there, right? So we need to make it transparent. And that's what this last part is for. The alpha, we can make, we'll start at 0.3. So yeah, we got a lot of transparency. So you can see the pileups really well, right? Cool, huh? So the red nations are probably what? China and India. Asia, right? Asia. 
And then yellow looks like it's what? Here. That's Japan. That has to be Japan there, right? Japan. This is the United States. North America. North America then. So the Americas, right? And then the green is what? Europe. Europe. And then the purple is Africa. Africa. Yeah, Africa. Okay. So the South American countries are pretty good with respect to per capita GDP and life expectancy, right? It's in Africa where we have a problem. Most of the countries are down here with low life expectancy. Probably because of civil war and brutal dictatorships, right? Well, and AIDS had a big factor yeah. too. Yeah, yep. And then the last thing we wanna to do to that graph is maybe add these labels. So at 40,000 and then 74, we're gonna put the word USA. At 1,770, we're gonna put India. And then 4,079, we're gonna put China. So this is the life expectancy, right? Roughly speaking. And these are the per capita GDP levels. And so I can, I can move USA up by um, increasing the life expectancy to maybe 77. I can lower China's down a little bit and I can lower India's down a little bit, right? So that's how you can label things too. And that's basically this gap miner chart. Here's China, United States, India. And then you can kind of play around with this too. You can do United Kingdom. You could do United States. You could do China. And then you could run it again. And you can see how you uh, the yellow is United Kingdom. China's the pink. And here comes the United States. We had that war, right? Anywhere it kind of drops massively. This is the Civil War probably here, right? Yeah, that's Civil War. This is the Great Depression. Or no, that's the world, that's World War One. <laughs> then UK just can't quite catch up to us, can they? <laughs> but here comes China. <laughs> so that's a Python. That's a Python script. It, that's probably when they got rid of the uh, one child per household is when well, this, China blew this, up. This is what, right, I mean, right, this right here is uh, basically Maoism. Mm -hmm. And this is the adoption of market, uh, relative, you know, markets, the market system, right? So th th this vertical transition here is probably due to, you know, the purges of, the, of Mao killing people off, right? Population control. Population control, killing people off. I think about 50 million people were killed under Mao, right? And then they liberalized um, their markets, set them free somewhat, right? <laughs> now they're catching up. They're pretty slick. So you can, that's what you can do with Python. So Python's a really powerful visual analytics tool. Then we'll do some more. This is the code. If you wanted to create that graph yourself, this 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 code here, all that I can do more um, compactly right here. And then it actually. This is actually saved to my hard drive. See that? It's actually saved my hard drive. And it, and it gives me more information. There's the Americas, right? Continent Asia, Asia. So this is Japan, right? So that's actually my hard drive. But I can embed this into my website if I wanted to. I could, I could actually embed this. In the, if this were... Um, if I actually had saved it to my website, I could actually save it to my website. <laughs> and I also produce it here too. So 
So the next one, we're going to get some new data. We're going to get this. This is 1970s education data. Okay, so column zero is the wage people are paid. Column one is their education level. Column two is their experience. Column three is their tenure. Column five, five is whether they're female or male. 21 was log wage. 22 was experience squared. And column 23 was tenure squared. And then I defined a variable called education squared. Okay. This is kind of like that thing I was showing you. I'm building a script. This calculates the means of wage, education, experience, and tenure in female. Gives you the proportion of female. This right here identifies the male, the, the person with the highest wage in that given year. So we're defining that person to be male. And then if the female, if that person was actually a female, we'll change it to female, right? And this does the same thing for minimum wage or the lowest wage. And then this does it for the median wage. So let's run that. So you can get an idea of how to build a, uh, So here's the mean. So this is a long time ago. This is like the 1970s, right? So these are the means. 48% of the sample is female. The highest annual, highest hourly wage was 24.98, and that went to a male. The lowest hourly wage went to a female. And then rows 82 and 402 correspond to people in the data set who earned the median hourly wage. The median hourly wage was 465. Okay, so this is kind of showing you how you can use Python to create a script to produce uh, an automated report. Okay. And then this is graphing it down here. This is going to graph it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to, comment out all this stuff here. <laughs> there we go. So I'm, I'm pretty soon with that graph, right? Now this doesn't look all that interesting, does it? This, this female is one, male is zero, right? So we can, we can do some things to this graph. We can do um, we can do experience squared here. We can do experience squared. That doesn't change it much. We can do tenure square. See so what happens. That's the size, right? Oh, wait a minute. Sorry. So the size is going to be whatever M is defined to be. And then the color is going to be female. And the transparency is going to be set at 0.5. So let's try tenure square, see what happens. See what happens when we change it to tenure square? This is 1970s data, right? So men's tenure was relatively uniformly distributed, where women's tenure was what? It was skewed to people who were low earners, right? Maybe back then people adhered to more uh, traditional gender roles. And so these women left their jobs to care for their kids back in the 1970s, right? But men stayed working, right? This is showing men working no matter what, having large tenures no matter what, right? So only poor women had large tenures, right? That's kind of cool. We'll leave it at that. We could do uh, education. We could do education squared, but I think we'll leave it at tenure square. <laughs> and then this one does a scatter plot where X is now education and Y is wage, right? So X is education. Up here, X is female and Y is wage. And the size is tenure square. Here, the size is experience squared, the wage is y, and the education is x. 
But because I have the size commented out, it's only going to show X and Y. Not very interesting, right? Not very interesting. Looks like there's a glass floor here, probably set by the minimum wage, right? A lot of people here under that bar are probably working tips right here. These are probably tips, right? Their hourly wage is less than the state minimum or the federal minimum because they're maybe working uh, tip jobs with wages, right? So let's change the format of that one a little bit. I'm going to bring in, I'm going to kind of class it up a little bit. We're going to include the size of the dot, which is experience. We're going to change the color to female and then have a transparency of 0.5. We really can't see it, can we? So let's over exaggerate the experience. Let's over exaggerate the experience. Let's do experience squared. That's probably too big though, right? It's probably too big. So let's, let's divide that by five. We're trying to figure out a good way to present this data. A really cool way to do it. Now that's pretty cool, isn't it? What does that tell you? For people with, whether the men or female, women probably had a higher average salary for a high level of education back in the 1970s. Men, with the exception of that person there who had a lot of, uh, I think tenure or experience, men had a low hourly average wage with the exception of that one, right? So it doesn't look like there's any discrimination for highly educated men and women. But look at high school educated people. Men make more money on average with a high school diploma than do women. Why? Maybe men back in the 1970s worked manufacturing jobs or construction jobs where there was more risk or maybe it was unionized. Women are probably working cafeteria jobs or grocery store jobs with a high school diploma, right? <laughs> then this is junior high school graduation, eighth grade. Something similar is going on there. But when you get above high school, man, it, it looks like there's not a lot of discrimination going on. And you would think there would be in the 1970s, wouldn't you? Right? For everything greater than a high school diploma, it looks like there's not much discrimination going on. Now, the, the women here have very low tenure or experience, right, relative to this man, right? So people with a high, a large amount of education have very little experience. People who have a high school diploma have more experience. Why? Because they didn't have to go to school for four or five years, right? So they, had, they have four or five more years of tenure or job experience. So that's pretty cool. We could also change this to log wage and it might help see, we might be better, it might be better to, yeah, there we go. See log wage kind of linearizes it, doesn't it? <laughs> it? It makes it easier to see things going on. But you have a lot of women right here making the minimum wage it looks like. At this level of wages, it's the minimum wage. They tend to have large tenures, but the men have large tenures too, right? But I, I find this really interesting here. This high school diploma, right? Men are working jobs where they're paying a lot more than women. And it's probably because these men are probably unionized or working in manufacturing or home construction, right? Where these jobs are probably more, I mean, again, 1970s, right? These are jobs are probably more like um, working at a, a, a cafeteria or a grocery store, right? So I thought that was pretty cool. And then we have the baseball part, right? We have the baseball part. Let's go ahead and run that. So this chart's not very interesting, but we have some other stuff that we got to go through up here, right? What is it? What is this fault stuff here? What are those? What are those two things? What are, what are we printing out right there? So let's go up here. So we got a new data set. This data set is web scraped from this 
from this website. I'll show you what it looks like in the website. Here's the data set, right? Adam Donachi's in the first row. There's a lot of data here. Josh Kinney's in the final row of the data set. If you right click and click on page, view page source, you can see the HTML code. And this, this is a little better put together than that government one, right? So if I, if I search for lesson symbol table, right? It takes me right to the table, see that? What kind of table is this? It's a wiki table, right? And notice, here's the table body. The first row is table headers, right? How do I know the first row is table headers? TH. The TH, exactly. The second row is data, right? D for delimited or D for data, right? So we're gonna do a for loop on TR and we're gonna do a for loop on TD and then we're gonna grab that stuff in the row, right? So that's what this is doing here. If I do a print right here on soup, let's do, yeah, if I do a print on soup, what's gonna get, what's gonna, gonna show me? It's going to give me the each row, right? Because it's looping on TR, right? So it's first looping on TR. So soup is um, each row, right? Each row, because it's looping on TR. If I print on row K, row K is doing what? Row K is getting rid of the, H, the HTML code. Row K is getting rid of the HTML code. <laughs> See that? Now this is just the row, right? That's each row. All the HTML code is gone. And then baseball stacks it, right? Baseball stacks it. This is where it uh, converts it from short-term memory to long-term memory. It's going to stack it. So each time through, baseball is going to get longer and longer and longer. The first time through, it's that empty row plus the first row. The second time through, it's the empty row plus the first two rows. And it just gets longer and longer and longer, right? You see that? And if I move the print statement outside of the for loop, we get to see what it looks like before we delete this first row. Okay, there it is right there, right? There's baseball before we deleted that first row. We know it's gonna delete a row because that's what the axis is, right? Axis, axis equals zero means delete a row. This means delete the first row because the first row is indicated by a zero, right? <laughs> so if I print baseball here and run that, <laughs> you're not gonna see that empty row, right? See that? You don't see that empty row anymore. We deleted that first row, which we use to stack below, right? We use that to stack below, right? If I had done this instead, Minus one, what's gonna happen here? What's the final row? Gonna delete the last. Yeah, Josh Kinney's the last row, right? So it'll keep that empty row and delete the last row. See, it kept that, it kept that, but then deleted the last row. It jo deleted the Josh Kinney row, right? So minus one means last, right? So the way you get good at this is just by playing around with it. And if you mess something up, just kind of back it out, back out of it. So let's just change this back to zero. Okay, and let's just get the name of the baseball player is column zero of baseball. Team is column one of baseball, which is actually the second column. 
Position is column two of baseball. Height, we have to convert to an integer. Weight, we have to convert to an integer. And age, we have to convert to an integer. And this right down here just converts height to metrics because it's originally in, um, uh, not metric. Oh, I can't think what I'm, I can't think right now. And this standard. Is, yeah, standard, yeah. And this is weight. And this calculates the BMI. Now, what does this do right here? This is interesting here. LR, low risk from COVID, low BMI. We'll just call it less than 20.5. I just made it up. And then HR is high risk. So here I'm printing the LR and the HR, right? I'm printing the LR and the HR. So it gives me a bunch of false and a bunch of uh, trues. So this is every one of these, right, is in this list. And it's either false or it's true, right? Same thing here, false or true. So what is this? These are the names where this was true. These are the names where this was true, right? So we'll go back up here. So when you put LR into the name, see the name right there? When you, when you put a bracket LR there, the output is where this statement is true. So th th these names, these names are all people with the BMI less than 20.5. These are the names of everybody that's high risk where this was true, right? So who's got a low uh, BMI? These guys right here. Who's got a high BMI? Well, let me know who Prince Fielder is. He's a pretty wide baseball player, right? Bartolo Colon was a pretty wide pitcher. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, you would want to probably, if you're playing baseball in the COVID pandemic, you want to know which of your players is risk to COVID. So you'd want to isolate them more than maybe the other players, right? You want them sitting like a long ways away from everybody with lots of space in between, right? Because they're at more risk. A BMI of more than 30 um, or uh, diabetes are high risk factors for COVID, right? Also vitamin D deficiency, selenium deficiency, and uh, yeah, selenium deficiency, vitamin D deficiency uh, are risk factors for COVID too. They don't talk about that though. I have to go outside the United States to find that out. <laughs> and this just gives the average height of and weight of lowest players, right? They're 74 inches tall and weigh 156.5 pounds. The average height and weight of high risk players is 74 inches tall and they weigh 260 pounds or more, right? And that comes from right here. So check this out. When I put LR inside a weight, I get the weight of low risk players. When I put HR in, inside a weight, I get the weight of high risk players. When I put that LR vector in the height, I get the height of low risk players. When I put that LR vector inside a height, I get the average, the height of high risk players. And this is just where it's outputted, right? And then here I have a correlation between height and weight. Is there a correlation between height and weight? Well, to calculate correlations of Python, you, you get a, a matrix and you pull a value out of the matrix, right? So down here, the matrix, that's the matrix, right? Why are these correlations one right here? Why is that correlation one and why is that correlation one? That's for the same variable. Yeah, so height is perfectly correlated with weight or Height is perfectly correlated with height. Weight is perfectly correlated with weight, right? Th so this might be the height column, right? And this might be the weight column. And this would be the weight row, and this would be the height row, 
right? So the height weight correlation is 0 0.5303. How did I pull that out of the matrix? Let's go back and look at it. See that? I pulled out the thing from the second row in the first column. See, if, if this is one, one, what's gonna happen? It's gonna be equal to one, right? See that? If it's zero, zero, it's gonna be equal to one, right? So it's gotta be two different numbers there, right? Zero, one or one, zero. Now, what does this do here? This copies the position vector, right? And then what do we do down here? We're replacing, so we copy position, right? So color initially, if we print color right here, if we print color, it's just gonna be the positions. See that? It's just the positions. So what we're doing is we're gonna replace, wherever we see relief picture, we're gonna replace that with red. Wherever we see starting picture, we're gonna replace that with red. Wherever we see designated hitter, we're gonna replace that with blue. And then everybody else is gonna be green, right? So now if I print color here at the end of, the, of this, right? It's gonna be, they're not gonna be positions, they're gonna be colors. So yeah, now I've changed them all to colors. So we do that, that's, a, that's an efficient way to do that to color, right? And then here we're scatter plotting height versus weight, right? Height versus weight. And anybody know what this does? OLS, anybody know what OLS does? Anybody know what or, ordinary least squares is? Regression? Have you ever put a line in a scatter plot? This creates that line. And line? No. This creates that uh, line. Trend right? line. Yeah, the trend line, line right? It's gonna, it's gonna take weight and it's gonna, this is the X variable. Sorry, this is the Y variable. So it's gonna regress weight on height and a constant to give us a line. Okay, and that's what's going on down here. We don't, we don't, sh we don't see the line though, right? We don't see the line yet. Let me, uh, let me uh, bring in the size. The size is M, and M is age, right? M is age. Oh, I got a parenthesis right there. So the image is M is age. Well, it doesn't really do much because most baseball players are in a certain age group, right? 20 to 40. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna over exaggerate the age. We'll square the age and see what happens. Still doesn't give enough variation, right? We want young ages to be small dots, we want big ages to be big dots. So let's do this. Let's raise the age to the fifth power. So it's gonna really over exaggerate the old people, right? But the problem with this is the dots are gonna be too big generally. Yeah, they're too big, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna scale them down. We're gonna scale them down by dividing by 25,000. See that? Now you see the young people are small dots and the big, the old people are big dots, right? So when you, the, the bigger power you raise to, the more exaggeration you can get, right? Because you can imagine what raising something to the fifth power looks like, right? Linear looks like this. Squared, it looks like this. But to the fifth power, it's gonna over exaggerate those old guys, right? Age. 
And you can see that red circles are what? Red circles are out here. They're tall, aren't they? Pictures are tall. Who's down here? Filters, right? Filters are shorter. You want a tall pitcher? Any see Randy Johnson pitch from the left hand? The guy was six foot freaking 10. He threw 100 miles an hour. When his hand and his body extended, he's halfway to the freaking plate. <laughs> right? 100 miles an hour coming from a six foot 10 guy with long arms? That guy, man, it's, it's, it, that you can't react to it, right? He's famous for killing a bird that flew in front of his pitch, right? <laughs> so pitchers are generally tall. You want a tall guy with long fingers to be a pitcher, right? The other guys are shorter. They're playing in the field, right? Who are these blue guys? Who are the blue guys? Catchers. Are they the catchers? Designated hitters. And what are the designated hitters? They're the big guys, <laughs> right? They're wide, they're big, they're tall, right? Big poppy from the, from the Red Sox, right? Their job is to hit it out of the ballpark. Do they need to run fast? No. They're not playing in the field. They're sitting on the bench. They get to play like three times a game, right? If it's the game's close, they might play twice. They might get up in the, the second inning, they might get up in the sixth inning, right? They might, you know, they might get up in the fifth inning, they might get up in the ninth inning. They're there to hit everybody in. They're batting third or fourth. Or they're probably batting fourth, right? They're not fast. They're not going to steal. They're not playing in the field. If they're playing, they're playing on first base, right? They're big guys, right? So the next, the next part is to create this X plot. And I'm going to print the X plot down here. The X plot is basically just a bunch of numbers between height, the minimum height, and the maximum height. And height is the x variable, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna print the x plot. So the x plot goes from the minimum height, right, to the maximum height. See that? 83. And then it just increments. It adds 0.326 to each one of these until you get to 83. It has the same increment between, right? Basically what it does, it takes 83 minus 67, divides by 50, and then adds that to 67, then adds that to the result, then adds that to the result, and the final is 83. Why? Because this is what we're gonna use to create the predicted Y values. So this right here, F1 creates the slope and the intercept, right? So next I'll, I'll print that. Well, I'll print that right here. So F1 dot parameter one, that is the slope. And then F1 dot Prams or F1 dot pram zero, that's the intercept. So the intercept is negative 154, right? And the slope is 4.829. So what does that mean? For every inch, right, that players increase by, so when you go from six foot to six foot one, that player gains on average 4.8 pounds. That's what that slope means. So each inch represents 4.8 pounds. And we know the correlation is pretty good because the correlation was 0.53, right? The correlation was positive. That's a pretty high correlation. So the taller you are, the more weight you will put on your, on your frame, right? And that weight is on average 4.83 pounds per inch gained in height which makes sense, I think. So this is the, uh, this right here is, we're taking each value of the X plot, we're multiplying by the slope and we're adding on the intercept.
Okay, so at this height, the line is gonna have that height, right? At this player height, the line is gonna have that height, right? All the way down to here, right? So this is gonna be the height right here, 246. So the line will end right about here somewhere, right? So this right here creates the points that create the line that we're gonna graph. <laughs> so now we're gonna put in, this right here will put in that line plot. And I'm gonna make the, I'm gonna change the color to pink. I'm gonna see if pink works. So this is what's gonna graph that line. This is gonna create the trend line. See that, the trend line? I could change it to black if I wanted to. My daughter's favorite color is pink. Her favorite singer is Rihanna. And she, my, my daughter, I swear to God, if they made Home Today and I watched Home Today, I would have thought that they got the inspiration for the girl in the movie Home for my daughter. They used her picture to create um, tip in the movie Home. They look exactly like. See, there's that line plot, right? So we start at the minimum, and at the minimum, we plug that value into our equation here, right? We plug that value into here, and we get 169.37, right? That height. And so th this data is used to draw out that line. Okay. <laughs> and then we can dress it up with a title. Uh, I'm not sure if the, yeah, the label will come in because I can find a label right here, X, Y label. Okay, so what do you notice about the uh, blue players? They're all above the black line. What's that mean? For their height, they're what? Above average weight. Exactly. For their height, the designated hitters are above average weight, right? We could change the size of the dot to the BMI too. We could change the size of the dot to the BMI. And if it's all kind of similar in size, we can over exaggerate. Oh, did I? Oh, lowercase BMI. lowercase so that's what you want to do when you're doing when you're creating these visuals you want to experiment a little bit and come up with a really interesting story visually right that's the that's the thing that you want to do in business analytics is come up with these really interesting stories so we need to over exaggerate the bmi so to over, to over exaggerate the bmi what we're going to do is we're going to take it to the fifth power and then divide by 25 20 250 thousand See if that works. Look at the BMI. <laughs> well, it makes sense, right? The bigger the weight for a given height, the bigger the BMI. So that's not really that interesting of a chart, is it? So the, down here, the BMIs are small. As you go up in height, the BMIs get bigger. So it might be a pretty cool chart. Do you like that better or do you like uh, age? Was it age that we had before? Yeah, it was age. Yeah. We can over-exaggerate six power and then divide by 500,000. See what that happens. Oh, <laughs> we got to divide by a lot more. That's a little, when you're taking the sixth power, you got to really divide. What we're trying to do is we're trying to over-exaggerate, right? <laughs> Still a little too much, right? So we'll try two million. <laughs> well, we're getting it down. We'll go five million. We could probably go a little more. 
do the bigger dots, do they tend to be on top? You have a lot of small dots down here, right? When you're young, you're kind of thin, but as you get older, you kind of put on weight, right? <laughs> That's a pretty cool, I think it's a pretty good diagram there, right? You can see a lot of green right here. We may want to divide it by a little bit more. <laughs> Again, we're trying to tell a really interesting story. That's pretty good right there, I think, right? So the age is the size of the dot, right? Age is the size of the dot. <laughs> okay. And it seems like older people generally are above the line, right? Older people are generally above the line because as you get older, you just pack on more weight or you decide to experiment with steroids. Okay. Well, so, like Frank, Frank Thomas, he wasn't fat. He was all muscle, but he yeah. was husky. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But uh, I think, uh, what's his name? Mark McGuire. Oh yeah, Roy Mitt. Or, or Barry Bonds. I mean, he went from like this little teeny guy to like this guy with those big <laughs> muscles, right? <laughs> so that's, that's the goal of visualization is to create a really interesting story visually, right? And I, got, I gave you a bunch of examples. And so the thing, what I, what I want you to do is kind of play around with this, undo the hashtags over the weekend, and then rerun the code and try to figure out the best stories by undoing those hashtags and experiment with the, the different sizes. Like, like here are the different choices, right? So try to come up with a really interesting story to tell with the Python, right? So you'd want to get rid of all the, let me get rid of all these. So what I want you to do is I want you to play around with the code a little bit and try to come up with what you think is the best story. <laughs> Ooh, I need to hashtag that out. I think these charts from the 1970s are really cool, right? It really illustrates the traditional generals that were in place, but they were really only the rich could afford those, couldn't they? Poor people down here, a poor woman's probably gonna be married to a poor man. A woman, a man, a woman of low education is probably gonna be married to a man of low education. And so they didn't have the luxury of being able to have those traditional generals, right? So that, that's really kind of interesting. This chart's really interesting because it doesn't look like there's a lot of discrimination going on. For anybody with, uh, say this is 13. So for 14 years of education or beyond, there doesn't look like there's a lot of discrimination going on, right? But there's a lot of differences in male and female wages in here, right? Here and here. So for people with a junior high school diploma, People with a high school diploma, people with one year of college, it looks like there's discrimination going on, but it might just be a result of what they did in terms of their occupation, right? I mean, it's 1970s. So if, if a wife, if, if a traditional wife was working back then, she's probably working a secondary job, right? Kind of like what, what goes on in Utah today. In Utah, in, in the Mormon uh, uh, subculture of Utah, Mormon, Mormon women are more likely to take on a job. They're more likely to work the secondary job, right? Because their 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 um, role is more of traditional mom. And I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just pointing it out to my colleagues, right? Because I pointed this out to my colleagues before. It's really hard to close the the gender wage gap in Utah because half the population is Mormon, and half the women choose um, to have a secondary uh, occupation, have the secondary, they're not the breadwinner. They, they choose not to be the breadwinner because they're adhering to more uh, uh, traditional gender roles, which is fine. I mean, that's their choice, right? 
so I, I, I don't see any reason to, uh, to uh, engineer society out of that. I mean, just what the kind of choices people make, right? People are free to make those kinds of choices, right? So I think that's re one reason why Utah has a bad rap with respect to the gender gap, because there's a significant portion of women in Utah who choose those traditional gender roles, right? Out of their religious beliefs, which is fine for me, right? I, there, you know, the funny thing is I interview or I talked to a lot of people from Afghanistan and the Middle East who might be driving a taxi or an Uber cab or a Lyft cab. And I asked them why they chose Utah. And they go, well, we like the traditional values of Utah. And they also like the fact that Utah reminds them of home, right? Which I think is interesting. So I think uh, Muslim and uh, Pakistani or Buddhist people from India who settled in Utah, they probably adhere to probably traditional gender roles too, right? Their kids might not, but maybe they do, right? So that's one of the reasons why Utah has a problem with a wage gap between men and women, right? And I think you have to account for that. And when you account for religion and culture, uh, you can explain a lot of that gap away. But if you, if you, I mean, if you really think that it's a problem today, you would think it would be a problem for people with an education of 14 years or more, but it doesn't really seem like there's a problem, does there? in terms of differences in male and female wages for highly educated people, right? In the 1970s, right? There is a problem here, but again, it's probably because of the type of jobs a woman could have gotten with a high school diploma back in the 1970s versus the kind of job a man could get in the 1970s, right? Those two occupations are different, right? Those are two different kinds of occupations, two different labor markets altogether, right? All right, that's all we have for today. I guess we'll do the Power BI on uh, Tuesday. So what you'll do this week is you'll just run this tutorial again and uh, try to come up with really interesting stories visually. All right, play with these hashtags in the code. All right, does everybody understand that? <laughs> play, with it, play, with, play with these uh, hashtags here. Where are they at right here? Swap those things out and see if you can come up with a really cool story. All right. And the more you look at that code, the more it'll make sense. But again, what you're trying to do is you're trying to tell an interesting story. And then uh, next week we'll do uh, Power BI Desktop, which is more SQL, but SQL on steroids. Power BI Desktop is like Power BI Desktop to access or SQL Lite is like uh, Ferrari making a minivan to my 2006 minivan, <laughs> which we had to finally give up last year because it, it went up Park City, it went up the hill to Park City one too many times. And the last time it went up, it, it created, we burned a bearing and it was making a loud engine knock. <laughs> so we had to buy, we had to buy a, a quote unquote new van last summer, which was a 2012, right? We don't buy new cars. Buying new cars is a, a good way to stay poor, right? Did you guys, uh, hey, did you guys listen to the uh, speaker yesterday in the power lunch? Oh man, she was good. She's a uh, an immigrant from Mexico who um, I think she said she was smuggled here by coyotes when she was young. And she's been here for 20 years and she owns like a buku quantity of rental properties and real estate. She's just making the dough. And the way she got her first loan, she had to overcome all kinds of hurdles because she was undocumented. So she was scrubbing toilets and saving everything. And she saved up $60,000 and a banker finally gave her a loan without papers. So she had a loan from Wells Fargo with uh, by saving and scraping up $60,000. So incredible story, man. Just incredible story. So the, the, the moral of the story is don't covet your neighbor's stuff. If you don't covet your neighbor's stuff, you don't consume. If you're not consuming, you can invest and you can sow. Sowing seeds turns corn. Instead of having a party like what Matt Damon's character could have had in a, 
in the Martian, right? He could have had a big party on those potatoes, but what did he do? He, he sowed them. He invested them, right? He invested in human capital and in turning the Martian soil, right? He, he sowed those potatoes. So don't covet, right? If you don't covet, you're not consuming. If you're not consuming, you can invest, right? I have a great quote from Will Rogers. Yeah. It says, too many people spend money they, don't, they have earned to buy things they don't want to impress people they don't like. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I mean, think about, think about that stuff that you spend money on. You buy yep. stuff that's going to end up where? In five years, it's going to end up in a landfill. Or in a storage unit that you're yeah. paying money for and yeah. you're not even using. <laughs> yeah. People to... pay money to store crap that they don't even want and yeah. use. My <laughs> cousin, ridiculous. Ron, my cousin Ron has a storage unit near our condo. And there are people that are paying him 80 bucks a month to store a car that doesn't work. And they've had that car there for three years. I mean, they that car, <laughs> they've spent more on that car then, you know, if they would have just sold it for scrap, they would have been up on it, right? But man, mm -hmm. I can't believe some of the stuff that they store over there. It's just nuts. But yeah, it's just going to end up in the landfill, right? So next time you're thinking about buying something that you don't need, play that song by Neil Young. Piece of crap. Saw it on the TV, bought it on the phone. Now you're home alone with a piece of crap. <laughs> All right, you, you can also think, you know, you don't see U-Hauls behind uh, hearses because you can't take that crap with you, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't. All you can take is your kids and your, uh, what you, I guess, what you experienced, what you learned, right? Yep. yep. You can take with you. But I can buy a big house now, pay it off for the rest of my life, and then reverse mortgage it till I'm dead. Yeah. yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, this woman that spoke yesterday... She doesn't have any debt and she owns like number of properties, man. She owns properties in Texas and Florida, Idaho and Utah. It's just crazy what she's been able to do in 20 years. Are right, they she, like vacation properties that she uses to rent well, out? I think what she does is she buys a house, she fixes it up, she Airbnbs it. And then she waits to sell it when it's, when she's got a nice capital gain. She used to rent them, but she didn't like renting it. I think the problem that you have with rental properties is you when, after about 10 years, you start getting a, a nice cash flow. And instead of re putting that money back into the property, you go to Jamaica or you buy a new car. And so the properties, the quality of the property goes down. And if the quality of the property goes down enough, the only people you're going to be able to attract are who? People who don't care about credit. Right. And they're not going to be able to pay the rent. Right. So if you keep putting that money back into your properties, keep updating them, you're going to attract young professionals who care about their credit and collecting rent from them is going to be a piece of cake. Right. Cause they're, they're not, they're not going to want their credit to be hurt. Right. That's why you need to keep investing it, put it back into the properties. Right. My wife and I would like to have, I mean, we could have at least had four rental properties by now, but my wife is Haitian and she really believes in education. So we can't use the public school system. So instead of having properties, I pay tuition. <laughs> public school, private school tuition. But hey, that's an investment in our kids, right? And uh, maybe they'll want to hang out with us when we're old and gray and they'll take care of us, but maybe they won't. <laughs> They'll buy you a nice, nice retirement home. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully they will. <laughs> well, you guys have a good weekend. Oh, man, we didn't even have a break, did we? We must be sickos. So is Power BI a Microsoft product? Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you, if you're, I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> what if it doesn't work? <laughs> yeah, if you're a Westminster student, you can either download it and install it like Access, or you can use it via Westminster Anywhere. It's, it's on Westminster anywhere. So you'll be able to use Power BI Desktop next week, whether you install it this week. Okay. So this week, try to install Power BI Desktop. Do the next uh, uh, reading, reading quiz or the next quiz. And then- What is the next reading? Um, I haven't, I haven't. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like two days ahead of you. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> 
So look, look for the homework assignments like Monday, because then maybe I'll have uh, uh, washed out all the errors. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm writing them tomorrow during the NCAA tournament. Oh, by the way, my NCAA tournament bracket on uh, DraftKings slash Dish Network is ranked 69th in the nation. Wow. 69. So if, if, my, if my Final Four works out, and for the most part, and uh, Gonzaga beats Baylor in the championship game, I might win the whole thing. So that'd be nice. <laughs> we'll, buy, we'll buy some rental properties with that. 